I am Vamsi Krishna, co-founder of Futurely and creative director of Fluxreal. Together, we will dive into ZBrush as an alternative tool for architects and designers to create speculative architectural outcomes. For these next four hours, we will see how to utilize ZBrush an alternative modeling platform that is widely utilized in the gaming, VFX, and animation industry. In the recent years, we've had a lot of architects and designers harnessing this sort of a modeling toolkit and utilize it for architectural purposes. So what we are about to see is a sort of an introductory journey into ZBrush and how ZBrush can yield certain architectural outcomes that can be considered for initial sketching, ideation, and deriving a conceptual foundation for your projects, which you can later take forward and develop it into um, architectural outcomes. So this is sort of the uh, paradigm that this whole exercise was, will revolve around. And in the process, we will go through the basic uh, navigation UI of ZBrush. And we, we will also look at how we can harness most of the tools, modifiers, and some of the plugins, which come as a part of the predefined software. We will also venture and navigate a little bit into developing 3D print prototypes. There are multiple ways to begin working with ZBrush. You could start off by loading the light box, which is like your project browser in ZBrush. And when you've been working for a long time, you might have a lot of saved files, but otherwise you have a lot of primitives, such as the brush or the Z project and the tool menu. So you can pick one of these primitives. And since it's centered towards character design and animation, basically, you have some of them that way, but at the same time, you also can go to the project menu and pick one of the primitives. So this is one way to begin with. And for most of us architects who are comfortable with a desired CAD program that we all are familiarized, such as Rhino or Revit, etc., you could import some of these models using the tool menu here and then get access to your geometries. So this way, it has the flexibility to work in both manners. And then you also could import stock geometries or mesh geometries from the internet and still be able to work forward. And to give a basic idea of the UI, you have the light box menu as we just visited, and you have the brushes ZBrush has a plethora of brushes to deal with, and they can produce uh, seemingly computational effects that you can utilize to even sketch out how your parametric or computational forms might be envisioned. Apart from that, you also have the alpha brushes, the textures, which we may not go too much into in the course of this exercise. And we have a lot of modifiers and options for geometries, arrays, and deformations. So they, some of these tools overlap with software such as Maya or 3ds Max. But ZBrush has its own touch and own exclusivity in terms of handling meshes. And in most cases, when you deal with ZBrush, you deal with it without a grid because you are devoid of scale and proportion by default, and you don't have a metric to measure as a standard practice. But in case you need some guides or suggestions, you all always have an option called the floor. But in most cases, ZBrush is a canvas that lets you go more freeform and come up with design solutions or strategies. So ideally, while working with ZBrush, a bounding box 
is a much more better frame of reference than that of using grids. So that also lets you intuitively develop much more interesting design strategies and ideas, which you may not be able to do in other 3D platforms. Fundamentally, since we deal with the mesh-based software, we can alter between different uh, levels of resolution between the high poly and low poly and different subdivision levels, which can lead to creation of different interesting forms and geometries. So that is one of the most uh, versatile aspect of ZBrush. And it can be all done just through a toggle of a slider. So this enables you to dynamically toggle between different subdivision levels and create um, different variations and see how it works on a low poly level and then a more smooth surface. In addition to working between different subdivision levels, you also can have something known as the poly grouping which is exclusive to ZBrush. It's a visual grouping format using which you can isolate and also be able to separate different uh, components of the same mesh. So this uh, allows you to more seamlessly enable and take control of different components of your mesh geometry and even separate them, make them into parts or even assemble them or edit certain components only on those specific parts and not let the rest gets affected. Having said that, we will also go over masking and alpha brushes. That lets you isolate parts of geometries and let the rest of your geometry have a modifier or a deformer operation. We can create our own custom alphas and masks but at the same time, we also have a predefined catalog that works the way you see it here now. So I'm applying certain modifier, uh, the alpha on top of the object, and it, it creates a sort of an effect that you see here. Once you try to introduce a different operation on top of the geometry, it lets you create these sort of effects that are otherwise much more complex to achieve. And this in turn gives you more control and when you create your own custom alphas and custom brushes, it, it makes your workflow more seamless and more personalized and specifically tailored to achieve your design goals. In addition to that, we will also look at how arrays and instant geometries can be created and altered real time based on the manipulations of the parent geometries. For some of you who may not be aware of, ZBrush is one of those very few tools in design that lets you have an extreme level of control even with high poly geometries. So ZBrush and Houdini, which is like a counterpart in terms of high poly handling, can handle more than 25 to 30 million poly count without much of a concern. And as you can see, just by simple manipulations, I'm able to achieve the sort of computational effects that may otherwise take much longer to work with. So, here we have some sort of a Calatrava-like uh, approach. And yet again, you have the ability to play with these instances, work with different levels of smoothness. And not just that, you can also go back to using some of your mesh meshes. as you see here, and alter the entire geometric articulation. So this 
enables you to have a much more control of the kind of aesthetic that you're producing and it also creates more freedom in terms of geometric exploration and since oftentimes the computational approach allows you to have a more instance or more replicable geometries so th this is a, a sure shot way that can let you do that also we will take a peek at how we can utilize and create different boolean based outcomes with perforations and utilization of negative spaces for instance so we have such a hard surface extremely low poly geometry such as this but yet using a boolean based strategy we can establish these sort of voids that are otherwise much more complex to be achieved. So as you can see, the, way, uh, the diversity and the various uh, stages of complexity that can be achieved instantaneously allows us to visualize and assess our architectural outcomes in a much more convenient manner. This is one of the most fundamental ways where ZBrush can help architecture and also be able to create interesting architectural outcomes that can otherwise be utilized for studying, evaluating, and also to develop a visual perception and analysis. So these sort of architectural outcomes can in turn be utilized to create architectural spaces. To add to that, we will also take a peek at the Z modeler brush, which is one of the most unique brushes in ZBrush to explain if we Take a look at this, this complete hard surface geometry. This one exclusive brush lets you extrude the polygons or create much more interesting channels. And you can also gain control over each edge or also the points. So this way, there is so much multiplicity of how you can manipulate the mesh and it is all at ease to be able to create the sort of outcomes that you look forward to. So we will explore some of these techniques and also many more and go in depth and take a peek at how we can create interesting architectural outcomes and complex geometries that you can develop further upon. Being able to just vary between the many different brushes and the many different tools that is offered here can let you produce a plethora of outcomes. I am Mamsi Krishna and this is my ZBrush tutorial class. I look forward to seeing you there.